Yeah, I'm happy to. Um, yeah, I wrote it. I hope I can describe it. Um, it's actually harder than you'd think to describe your own movie. Uh, the Year of Spectacular Men is about um, this girl, Izzy. She's 22 years old. She's a very kind of classic millennial. She's been sort of sold this bill of goods that you go to college and you get out and you're fine and you know what you want to do with your life. And we all know that's not the case. She gets out she's floundering. She moves back to LA to live with her little sister. And, um, it's about five guys she dates over the course of this one year and it doesn't go so great. Um, and it's, you know, there's these kind of mini love stories threaded throughout the film, but ultimately it's really a love story between sisters, myself and my sister Zoe Dwight. She's an amazing actress and we play sisters in the movie. So it was like very method. We've been training our whole lives for these roles. Um, well, it started with Maddie's script, and she wrote it, and so I strong-harmed her into letting me direct it. I've, <laughs> I've been a director for 15 years in TV, doing TV movies, and Switch at Birth, and Mom, and all different things, but I'd never directed a feature from the ground up, and Maddie wrote this incredible script, and I said, please, can I direct it? And she said, yes. So, but it was one of those crazy things, you know, because even though uh, I've been in Hollywood for a long time, you might know me from Back to the Future, or some kind of wonderful, or Carolina and City, I've been around for a very long time. I'd never really kind of, you know, been from at the ground level of something, you know, I always kind of come in when it's already set up. So I got to learn a lot, and we really, we all learned a lot, and we all... Um, gave each other jobs that no one else would give us because Zoe is a producer on the movie as well as a star. Mm -hmm. Maddie's the writer, the star, and she's done a lot of, and she had done I a lot of acting and she composed the music. I was, I was a composer, yeah, so all the score I did. All the cues in the movie I wrote. And five of the songs. <laughs> it's both harder and more fun for me. That's my experience of it. Um, we know each other so well, that, especially because it's really always a stressful situation that we're in. You know, even now. When you're so, shooting. When yeah, you're shooting, shooting, I mean, yeah. it's crazy because it's like every second is money. Like, God forbid you, something goes wrong. You know, it's always like crisis management when you're shooting a movie. And we know each other really well. So they know when I'm stressed out. And you know how you're so attuned to the, your family or your, Their face. your lovers. You know, you know exactly, you know, I could hide things from other people that I couldn't hide from them and vice versa. So that, that was a little challenging. But it really is like, for me, it's the greatest experience of my artistic life this experience with them. I love them, they're so good, and I admire them so much, and they taught me so much, my two kids, in this experience. Man, there's just so many different pieces of getting a film made. Like, for me, the most kind of significant moments have been all the times we pushed through the moments where a lot of people might have given up, because it's really hard. So, like, when you're physically shooting the movie, that's, like, the fun part, right? Like, that's not the part I think about necessarily as being emblematic. Like, I think when we finally got the budget for the film, I really think of that moment. When I think of us getting in where we premiered the movie, LA Film Festival, like, those are the real heroes of the journey. You know, these film festivals that take on independent films and find out how to finance these festivals and get butts in the seats. Like, the people at Film Independent, like... And I think of them as being like so amazing. And when Mar Vista, you know, came in and said, we want to distribute the movie, I think of those moments because there's so many benchmarkers to getting a film done. It's such a long process with so many people involved and requires a lot of like keeping what I like to call the mission statement, like remembering why you did it. You have to remind yourself a lot. Because there's going to be a lot of moments where people don't like the movie or they, you know, people are going to say no and it's going to be a lot of disappointment. So trying to just remember why we made the movie, I think, is the thing I'm really, really proud of. Like, we stuck with it. And what's really, what's really great about independent film is, like, for better or for worse, we made the movie we wanted to make. We made yeah. that she wrote. You know, and a lot of people started out, it was, it's very, it, the scope is really big with the four seasons, the five or six spectacular men, the four locations, Los Angeles, uh, Lake Tahoe, San Francisco, New York, we shot in New York. We shot in all those places, and for an independent film, that's really hard to do. So we really made the movie we wanted to make, and we made a really authentic uh, version of a millennial girl story written by a millennial, millennial girl. When I, when I was an ingenue, not one of my words was written by a woman, and certainly not someone my age. So, you know, this is a really authentic view of what 
you know, she wanted to write, and we made just it better happen. Lit. We're just better lit. <laughs> <laughs> when I think about this movie now, I think about how much love was put into it. So it, it's a hopeful movie. It's about love, about love between people, love of cities, love of self. Um, but it's also really funny. So it's, I think it's really entertaining, and the message... I do a lot of... I hump a chair. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's not forget. Like... <laughs> I throw up in a ceramic vase. <laughs> like we're leaving out all the really important stuff. Yeah, it's true. For You're me, right. the it's silly, true. For, for me, the message of the film is uh, is baked into why we made it. Yeah. Like, I wanted to make this movie because I don't think people make movies for millennial women. For me, that's like the message of this film. I'm like, the message is here's your movie. Yeah. Like. No one else made it for you, you know what I mean? Like, we or if they it. did, like, we had to do you know? I just think it's so crazy. Like, my mom always says, like, women in TV, characters in TV and film, they go from being in high school to being 35 and either married with children or looking for love. Like, I don't know what happens yes, to the like, decade in between. Yeah, so they just disappear. So this is the movie for you and for you. In your 20s. But it seems like men like it. But yeah, that story, if, I feel very strongly. There's not enough stories about women. And, you know, and written by and for. And you've never seen a movie where sisters play sisters and their mother directs it. And it's not like, I want, I want someone to do like an official case study to see if that's ever <laughs> happened. And I'm pretty sure it has never happened in the history of Hollywood. So I'd just like to say that that's my claim to fame. And I think we're the only ones. That's really heartwarming. I mean, they're really good together, Maddie and Zoe Deutsch. They're really funny and good together. The Year of Spectacular Men. It's out in select theaters on... And VOD and On Demand on June, June 15th. 15th. You'll love it. Okay.